everybody. It is May 15th, 2023. And the one I'm about to show you right now is in Chincoteague, Virginia. Now, Chincoteague, Virginia is a very unique town. Uh, maybe you've heard of it before, but they're really known for their wild ponies. They have a state park with a beach that they contain these ponies in, but they are wild. And it's got a pretty long history of why they're there in the first place and what they do with them. But, uh, but once a year, they actually gather a lot of the ponies up and they swim them across the channel into Assateague Island, Maryland. And they auction them off there. Uh, they do that to control the population of them because if they didn't do that, uh, the population would get too high and then the whole island would be overran with ponies. But like I said, it's got a pretty rich history in that. Um, they call it pony penning when they round them all up and send them across the channel. And, and the guys that do it are actually called saltwater cowboys. Um, but uh, it's something the locals really take serious. And, um, and it's a, like I said, it's a, it, it's a neat thing. I've never been there to watch it, but people come from all over to watch this. I've been to both beaches, Assateague and Shankateague, uh, many times, and it's a beautiful place. So if you're interested in any more of that, I would recommend probably Googling um, either Chincoteague ponies or Assateague ponies or something like that um, and look into it because it's, it's pretty neat. But uh, we're not going there for the ponies. We're going there for a lady that's having trouble with her air conditioning. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we have a, I believe this is a Brone, a Brone or an air temp a package unit here. Either way, it's made by Nordine, and a uh, customer says it is not uh, it was not working properly. So she said um, she turned it on, and it ran and ran and ran. She thought it was blowing cold air, but the thermostat wouldn't get below 75 degrees. So it looks like we got a three-tonner gas pack. So let's get into it and see what's going on. We're just going to do a quick visual inspection on everything. Don't see any signs of oil, any signs of burning or anything. All right, now I gave the thermostat a call. I hear the fan running, but the compressor is not contact just not even pulled in so the reason the condenser fan was running without the contactor pulled in is because it's an ecm condenser motor uh it has 240 volts going to it at all times and when the board gets a 24 volt call on y it brings the fan on a lot of them will bring the fan on when it has a 24 volt call at the contactor but this one's not set up that way. When it gets a 24 volt call just on Y at the board, it brings the fan on. So that's why the fan's running without the contactor pulled in. Let's just take a look here between common and Y. Between common and Y. We got 26 volts there. So let's see if we have it contactor nope we don't have it at the contactor <clears throat> so we have it coming from the thermostat Let's see if we have it down here between Y and common yep we got it here too so we're losing it on our way to our contactor We're going to figure out what it goes through. Probably a couple pressure switches. Maybe one of them's open. So we'll check that now. All right, so if we look at our schematic here, this is our contactor up here. This is our common, and this is our 24 volts, so the yellow wire. So that yellow wire comes out of the compressor contactor and comes back here to the board on M. So these pressure switches here 
pressure switch and then this one looks like reversing valve all these pressure switches have to be closed to initiate uh, 24 volts on M so we're gonna check these pressure switches next looks like we have a low pressure and a high pressure switch so here is M here see it there M and then switch all right so we've got this guy locked on common there and then we're gonna take this guy we're gonna check off of M all right so we do have nothing on M because our compressor contactor is not pulled in Well, we have power coming into the switch. But we don't have power coming out. All right, so we know one of our pressure switches is open. Now, we have to figure out which one. And this bundle down here is our pressure switches. So we're gonna open those up and see which one's open. All right, well, the easiest thing to do to see if you have uh, your low pressure switch open is to just press in a valve core. See if you got pressure. All right, I'm pressing in that valve core. I have no pressure. So this thing has lost all its refrigerant. And that is bad news for the customer. So I guess we gotta do a leak check. Go ahead and pull it pull the disconnect and we're going to start opening panels up and see what we can see where this all this refrigerant leaked out at all right just to reiterate we have zero pressure here we got our nitrogen hooked up we're going to turn it on and we're going to pump her full of nitro bring this up to about 400 we're gonna switch over to pressure test mode. All right. Let's let her have it. Oops. Let's make sure these are on. For, so with nothing in the system, it should be pretty easy to find, hopefully. I seen some oil on this TXV external uh, equalization tube. I haven't heard anything. I have 266 pounds of pressure on it. We'll put some more in it, but like I said, there's oil all over this TXV. So we'll soap that up and see what we can find. All right, we got our soap here. Here's the truck in, the, in a state of disarray. <laughs> you guys, once I get it cleaned up, I'll give you a tour, I promise. But it is a mess right now, so I promise I'll give you a tour one of these days. All right, well, we have an audible leak right now. I started moving this capillary tube a little bit, and it got worse. see it though all right it's behind here i can feel it it's a rub out so we're gonna have to pop this top to fix it yep i can feel it right here it feels like a gouge but it it, it feels like it, it, it's a rub out so we can fix that we just got to break the bad news of the customer all right i got this little this little coil cover off and I was able to get in here a little bit the leak is right there I don't know if you guys can see that right there all 
I thought it'd be easier to take this this little cover off here instead of taking the whole top off. And was I right? I don't know. But I'm gonna have to raise that back shut. Right, factory charge, 160 ounces. Wow, that's 10 pounds. Holy smokes. All right. All right, guys, I think I got it. I did gob a bunch of solder on there, but it looks like I got it. So we're going to put some nitro on it and see if it's still leaking. Right, this can of, this bottle of nitro is almost dead, but looks like I can get probably about 100 PSI in there. I soaked it up. Doesn't look like it's leaking anymore. I can't hear it either. Let's, let's cut the nitro off. Huh, I think we're good. So we're gonna get as much nitro out of this bottle as we can. Let it sit for a couple minutes. And then uh, we'll blow it off and pull a vacuum. All right, so we got 136.6 in there. Let that sit for a couple minutes. All right, guys, we got 136.3. I actually didn't start the pressure test till it hit 136.4. Um, we've been going for almost five minutes now, and we have barely any drop here. It's not even showing up on the, the Delta P. So, man, I'm getting tore up by mosquitoes. So, um, I am going to go ahead and blow this. I would usually wait about 10 to 15 minutes, but I'm trying to get this one finished up. All right, guys, we got our vacuum going now. A double hose set up with our valve core removers. I got my micron gauge hooked up inside here. It's on this hose here. You can see it hanging right in there. So once I go uh, put refrigerant in it, I will shut that valve off and um, protect my micron gauge a little bit better. It is rated for some pressure, but uh, it just makes it a little, it just protects it a little more. So we're down to 3,300 and dropping. So we're gonna let this pull for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these screws and stuff back in while we're evacuating all right you guys i'm putting the charge in now i realize i didn't get any of the vacuum or decay test i'm trying to hurry up here um there was a lot of back and forth with the customer over pricing so um <laughs> that took a while so um i'm just trying to hurry up and get finished up here so um, we've got about four almost five pounds in it now uh, we're gonna put the panels on and uh, get this thing fired up and put the trim charge in all right guys we got just about 10 pounds in it it did read 10 pounds for a second but i guess my scale moved a little bit uh, i got this all buttoned up that's why i don't have my my pipe clamps in there but our pressures are looking good we're going to go ahead and get a temperature reading here in a couple minutes uh delta t and uh, we should be good to go here all right, guys, sorry I really couldn't get most of the end of that one. I was dealing with the customer for a good portion of the time. I bid the job for a certain number of hours, and um, I had to deal with a lot of back and forth with the customer, so I wasn't able to get a lot of the end of it. But looks like I got a good 18, 19 degree split there. I'm just going to go around, check her filters for her. Um, it's, it is an elderly lady, so uh, I had to talk to the granddaughter about um, about pricing and payment and stuff like that. So um, it really cut into my job time after I bid the job for a, a specific number of hours. Um, and then I had to deal with the customer for a portion of that time. I was just trying to uh, hurry up and get done. So, um, all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and I'm off to the next one.